Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again with another video talking about VR and decisions because these Manchester United fans, players, and the manager, Eric Ten Hag, need to be called out for their crybaby shenanigans. I was about to say another word, but I don't want to say that. First and foremost, shout out to all the Gooners out there. We won the game 3-1. We're now going to look over some of the decisions, calls, and some of these things that these Manchester United fans are talking about and debunk all these silly VAR topics. First and foremost, shout out to all you guys. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know, did you think Manchester United got robbed? Because reportedly, their fans all believe they got robbed. So I'm here to tell them that they didn't. Let's get the show started. First things first. I don't know why there's a cat. I don't know what's going on. Let me let me show you guys what's going on. So I got boys like Kaz, my boy Kaz, talking to me about, oh, Egal, you complain about VR decisions. I'm just going to let you guys know right now. There's nothing wrong with complaining about the poor referee in the Premier League. But when you are out here saying absolutely everything is a foul, everything's a red card, we got to call you out. So first things first, let's get into this one here. So this is the, the, the supposed red card on Saka that they keep saying. So as you can see here, Diego Della clearly, clearly it has his foot in front of Saka and is about to trip him. As Saka is getting tripped, he's also getting held by his hand. As you can see right there, his arm is holding him back. He then falls, and with him falling, he tries to go for the ball. Bruno gets to the ball first, and he hits. He 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 gets his leg. Now he does get his leg, but because there's no force and he's clearly been tripped, and this is not malicious intent. He didn't lunge at him, and it was just a quick. Uh, it was a, it was from short distance. They, they did not deem it as a red card offense. It was a yellow card. He was given the yellow card, and we were subsequently given the ball back as he was fouled to begin with. That was the correct decision, and people are making it, uh, blowing it out of proportion, saying that this should have been a red, la, 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 cry, cry, cry. Next thing you know, they're going to cry like little babies. That's what it is, and I don't blame them crying because their captain, Bruno, is crying on the floor. Their manager is crying in interviews after the game. God forsake, they lose a game and, and they feel like uh, the whole world is against them. The whole world's not against Manchester United. You guys just lost and you don't know how to take it. That's the facts. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an angel and I've been able to take every single loss. No, that, that's not the truth. But what's been hap what happened yesterday is that there was a lot of decisions and majority of the decisions were actually spot on. Now, Manchester United fans are all going to talk about this Saka situation. But what they're not going to talk about is some of these other situations. So I got to talk about these two. First, we, we spoke about the second one, right? Also, big up Declan Rice for scoring a goal against Manchester United, just like Granit Xhaka would do in the knee slide also. Um, first thing, Lindelof got a yellow card for this right here. Last man tackle. I'm telling you, this could have easily been a red. But he got given a yellow, right? Then there's a situation where he also kicked him in the head in the 37th minute. Now, he already got to the ball and headed it down. Then he kicked him. So I don't know where these guys have a leg to stand on with some of these decisions because both teams got uh, yellow cards. Uh, and I'm not saying Sakas was a red, but if you're saying Sakas was a red, what is that? Then you got the penalty. We're going to talk about the penalty in more detail, but... If I'm not mistaken, Rashford got given a penalty just a couple of days ago uh, uh, for, for something like this. And Havertz's penalty, there is contact. Now, we're going to talk about this Havertz penalty. Because the Havertz penalty, I personally did not think it was that outrageous to not give the penalty. So let's let's look at what we what we got here. So with that, there, there it was an Aaron Wan-Bissaka tackle. You can see here that... If you first look, it looks like Havers trips here. And this is what the referee originally thought was the foul. But what actually happened was the foul took place a little bit higher where the contact was like hip to hip contact. And Casemiro hasn't even actually gotten in on the player. Now, is this a dive? I would say, you know what? These I've seen game, I've been see I've seen it been given. Like it's not major contact but there is contact the player goes down and sometimes it gets given sometimes it doesn't overall it is what it is I, I don't think this is 
an outrageous call. We sh we shouldn't have we we could have got a penalty. We didn't, but it is what it is. This game literally had every call, so I'm not going to complain. But it is rare to see a referee go to the monitor and overturn a penalty uh, a penalty decision that he made. So that was a rare case where you see Anthony Taylor go to the monitor and say, you know what, I got it wrong, and he overturns it. I've not seen that that many that many times. If it wasn't given, if it wasn't given as a penalty, would it have been overturned to be given? Potentially not. But I don't I don't know. Personally, for me, this wasn't a penalty, correct decision, and I'm not going to complain about this. But in the time, I didn't really think it was a penalty either. I just kind of seen Kai Havertz go down, and I'm like, yes, I just started celebrating. I didn't really care what was going on. But yeah, we've seen situations like that, like the Sabaz Live situation earlier and Rashford this season be given now this one here first things and first and foremost we have to give gabriel Magales some credit he came into this game hasn't played much recently and he walked into this game and this the he was a physical presence and the iq to tr keep your run lean back do the do the michael jackson lean back or or should i say um uh fat joe lean back uh-huh lean back uh-huh he leaned back he got him in the offside trap. And to the people who are saying this is onside, it's clearly onside, la, 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 la. If you don't understand how angles work, I can't help you. But clearly the uh, the technology has done its job. Eric Ten Hag, all the players, all the people crying, you stop crying about the offside because this is clearly an, a, a, a correct decision, right? Now, the reason why people are, are trying to say some next stuff is because they're seeing different angles on TV. But as you know, the, the angles on TV are not correct. Now, it looks marginal from some, uh, from some camera angles, but the reality is it's a lot different when you, see, when you see it up close. So now that you see the big difference, you believe it now? And yeah, big up to Gabriel Magales. Absolute monstrous performance. Partey got injured. He came back into the lineup, and it was a great decision for Mikel Arteta, and he absolutely balled out. Now, Chilwa had a similar decision this season that happened to him. It was marginal, but guess what? It's still, it's still, it's it's still. Uh, what do you call it? Offside. You can't do nothing about it. It's very marginal, but it's offside. We've seen it in the Liverpool game, so they're keeping consistent. Now, people are saying Gabriel Magales fouled uh, Hoyland in the box, and that was a penalty. Now, the Hoyland foul, I don't believe this was a penalty. If you actually watch the video of what what, Gab what happened with, between him and Gabriel Magales, there was a situation where Gabriel Magales was ushering the ball to Saliba so he can scoop it up and stopping the player from continuing his run. Now, there's nothing in the rules that say you cannot that you cannot uh, try to gain positioning over each other. The only thing that the game says is you can't take each other out. Like, you can't swipe him, completely take him out. Now, he didn't do that. What he did was he got his body in front of the player. The player tried to get around him. And as the player is trying to get around him, he fell down. Nothing's wrong with that. Now, if you want to try to say, oh, you got, you're being biased. I'm not being biased. I'm, I can give you other examples of this. Hap uh, I can give you other examples of this, uh, this kind of situation happening. But it happened in the 87th minute. You can watch it again yourself. I can try to get you another. Ca I can try to get you another camera angle, but these things happen maybe three, four times every game, in the box, and it is not something to be crying over or going crazy over. I think once again we're over exaggerating a situation. Like Anthony Taylor had it had given it. If Anthony Taylor had given the penalty, I don't know if it would have been over overturned. Because these things come down to subjectiveness. But Gabriel Magales did not use his foot to push him. He did not do anything else. He just merely put his hand and continued to walk with him to try to stay in front of him as the ball was scooped up by Saliba. By the time the player even was close to the ball, Saliba already scooped it up. So I don't think this is a foul on, on Rasmin Hoyland. I think the challenge was clean and this was the correct decision. But people are going to say I'm, I'm being biased. So I can't win either way. The professionals themselves on Sky Sports are saying it. So that is that. Is that. Now um, let's go to the next one. 
the foul on Johnny Evans. Apparently, Declan Rice's goal was a foul on Johnny Evans because, if I'm not mistaken, once again, Gabriel Magalis is blocking Johnny Evans from going to Declan Rice. There is no rule that says, in the in the base of the play, you cannot keep your ground and stop yourself uh, doing anything. Like I don't know if there's a rule that, that's against that, but let me know because I don't know any rules that are against that. But let's see what ESPN say. There is no chance whatsoever that this goal would be ruled out. So Eric Ten Hag, once again, is chatting shit. Because if you guys don't know what Eric Ten Hag said, he went he went on he went on after the match and he started crying. He spoke about let me just show you guys ESPN. Because if if I'm not mistaken, he made an article and he said um, verbatim his words were this some oh, where is it? Here it is. I got it. I'm gonna show it to you guys right now. This is this is what I was saying. As a as a manager, he, you have to hold yourself accountable. Mikel Arteta, when he makes mistakes, he holds himself accountable and he puts himself in the firing firing line. What does Ten Hag do? He says it was not offside. The camera angle was wrong. The penalty on Hoyland should have stood. And it was a foul on Johnny Evans. Eric Ten Hag, you bald fraud. You've been found out. We don't. We, uh, we, we've, we've, you've been exposed, and now even Sancho's turned against you. So, you get what you deserve. Manchester United fans, I'm, I'm trying to be honest here. Let's be honest. You guys, you guys were outplayed for the majority of the game, and the better team won. Stop doing this crybaby stuff. Because even though, even though we, we kind of, we kind of had a, a, a regis call against us when we played against you, at your, at your ground last year, I moved on. So you guys need to move on also. That's it for today. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Love for the love, people. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you enjoy the video. I'll catch you guys on the on the next video. I'm out of here, people. Love.